JBL Extreme 3. I didn't know. I'm one of the few ones that actually has a JBL Extreme 3. Normally I'm miles behind everybody else when I get my speakers. Apparently this time, a lot of you aren't getting it. Ask me where I got mine. I got mine off eBay. The geezer that sold it to me, well the company that sold it to me, they don't have any more. So maybe I just got lucky. But I have now got my JBL Extreme 3. I did a review on the Extreme 1 versus the Extreme 2 versus Extreme 3. It was a pleasant surprise to me to find for the first time, still a boombox, but for the first time the Extreme 3 of the Extreme series could be a day-to-day -day listen. Yes, it's got the heavy thump in the, in the low end, does dig deepest, but it's now the flattest of the Extreme series, and flat enough that it's now a reasonable listen, and not just at big volumes where you're going to get the boom boom. It's now more of an all-round speaker, but still a boombox, still a big, big old slam in the bass. And now people are asking me, can you against this speaker, that speaker? But mostly the W King D8, which I'm going to do down the road, and the Sony XP43. I do use this on a daily basis. It's such a safe sound, and it, there is a decent big sound stage because it's a big speaker. That it's an easy go-to because I know everything's going to sound okay, quite good but it's never going to sound brilliant to my ears. Now, before I get into the actual comparison, JBL Extreme 3 versus Sony XP43, I am going to use my own EQ settings. I'm going to explain to you why I'm using my own EQ settings. Till now, really, the only speaker I've been doing that with is Emotion Plus. Because when I use my settings, which are my personal settings, some people don't like it, but a lot of you do, it's because it makes a huge difference between default and custom. Enough that I would say, yeah, okay, but yeah, really great with, with custom. And because I can embed it into the firmware via the app, you can embed it into the speaker. And I'm only using EQ where I can embed into the speaker itself for various reasons. And not just, it's a lot easier when you go from device to, to device. It's the EQ is in the speaker, not on the device itself. Frequency response explaining why I'm using plus three bass plus six mids and plus four highs. XB43 in default clear audio mode. Turn on my personal settings, plus three bass, plus six mids, plus four treble. And you can see basically it's the same frequency response, but it's louder. So it's a free hit. It's a bit louder. You haven't really changed the sound that much, except for a little bit where you'd want it. Now, if I overlay my EQ over the default mode, what you can see when I match up the bass, We've got stronger the mids and be a little bit more on the highs. So it's not cost us anything and it's flattened the frequency response a little bit. Now, what about plus 10 then? You've gone plus three. Ooh, what about a bit more bass? Yeah, you've got a bit more bass, but you're losing out in the mids and the highs. So actually, some of that extra bass is actually relative extra bass. So let you know, even with the extra mids in EQ mode, look at that dip in the mids, two and a half kilos. 2.5 kilos down to about 200 hertz. Now look at the extreme. It's actually a bit flatter. The gap is from a little bit lower down and the gap is less. Although, so it's tight, it's a little bit mids light, but it's actually flatter than the Sony XB43, even with a little help from EQ. So it's not a huge difference going from my EQ to the default setting, but it does fill out the mids in a subtle way, enough to change it to my ears in a nice way without changing the overall frequency response in a dramatic way. Um, and I found those for me the best settings, but I'm also gonna use plus 10 in the bass because you're probably, be, it's gonna be someone gonna say, well, you're in it plus three and it's against a boom box. Let's hear what it can do plus 10 in the bass. So I'm gonna be doing those two EQ settings against the extreme three. So I want to also say, Thank you, a lot of you have been telling me the reason why half a kilo less now on the Extreme 3 compared to the JBL Extreme 2. I didn't know why. You guys have been telling me. They've gone from ferrite magnets to neodymium magnets. High quality magnets, they weigh a lot less. So that explains why it weighs less. I also was curious as to why in the, uh, the manual that gives you all the specs from JBL on the JBL Extreme 3, didn't tell you the battery specs. Now, it does say uh, 36 watt hours, so apparently that hadn't changed from the, the Extreme 2. But I was curious, I wondered if there was something weird going on. <laughs> Somebody else, thank you very much. I can't remember your name off the top of my head, but you pointed out to me that <laughs> 
in very, very small print around the edge uh, of the rear flap are the specs as and the specs for the battery where it actually says 7.26 volts, 5,000 milliamp hours. So, so there you go. It is the same battery as previously, although uh, now apparently running at 7.26 volts. They're getting really weird JBL in their specs. We've had uh, the JBL Go 4.2 watts. It gave us frequency response of 53.5 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It's, you know, when you'd normally expect them to round it up or down. And now 7.26 volts. They're either being really, really honest or someone is having a real laugh. In terms of comparing these two, well, I said it's lighter now. Two kilos now on the JBL Extreme 3. And that's significant because three kilos, it was a big jump in weight uh, on this latest XB series, the XB43. Three kilos, three kilos is heavy. Three kilos is significant in your hand. Whereas this feels surprisingly light at two kilos. 30% more, uh, but uh, not in terms of price. 200 pounds when I last checked. For the Sony XB43, 280 pounds. We're always gonna get an extreme price with the extreme. 280 pound, it obviously will come down a little bit later on, but that's, we've got an 80 pound difference. You're paying 80 pound more. And of course, you're gonna pay 80 pound more, you're gonna get a better codec. Oh, hang on, the better codec's in the Sony. As we know, Sony do their proprietary LDAC codec. It's a high-end codec. We've got SBC, 280 pounds. We've got SB, I said it before, I'm saying it again, because I don't understand when you're gonna charge that sort of money for a speaker why you would not bother with a decent codec. And especially when you're you're competing against these speakers now that are 80 pound less, but with the LDAC codec, a really nice codec. They're both coming out this year. They have spot on, both have the same battery in actual capacity in terms of 36.3 watt hours. They are identical. Bluetooth 5 on the Sony XB43. It's 5.1 cutting edge technology on the JBL Extreme 3. But now modern speakers, they both have USB-C charging. However, it is a five volts, three amps uh, charging on, on that USB-C port. You do get um, a decent old charger with the JBL Extreme 3. It is USB-C connector on the end. However, it will give you, uh, it, says on, it says on the label, 20 volts, three amps. Technically, we could get up to 60 watts out of here. I've now tested maximum volume. I've got three hours, 50 minutes. Goes a bit louder than the Extreme 2, which was just over four hours. So that's spot on what you'd expect, given the same battery and going a bit louder. So yeah, that, that's decent enough. When you consider hmm, six hours, 40 minutes, maximum volume on the Sony XB43, ah, but an uh, actual maximum volume, two hours, 20 minutes. And then Sony being Sony, because they, they like to publicize really long, long extended, all huge, brilliant battery life. But actually six hours, 40 minutes maximum volume, but it's, it's reducing uh, vo the volume along the way. It's going into low volume mode. Now, latency has never been uh, one of the strong points uh, for JBL. Still not a strong point. I'm getting average latency Bluetooth, and I'm stressing Bluetooth 140 milliseconds. I think there's someone called La Petite or something like that. I, I know you have messaged, commented a couple of times and I've seen you comment on other threads. It's a big deal to this guy, latency. And he was mentioning, pointed me to a video where they talked about JBL not only have pretty awful Bluetooth latency because these guys want a DJ, even the auxiliary. Now they both have auxiliary inputs, but even on the auxiliary input, uh, they're saying they get lag. Now I do get lag on uh, some of my J on the auxiliary on some of my JBL speakers, but I tested the Extreme Three, and I have to say on my measurements, and I'm not saying uh, it's the greatest measurement of all time, but zero milliseconds is pretty much. <laughs> there's not a huge margin of error. I didn't get any lag. Literally, it was in sync with um, whatever I, I tried to test it with. So no, to me, it, so I know the Extreme as a series I said to have bad lag and J on the auxiliary input where you shouldn't really get any lag but JBL say it's because of the processing that's still going on uh, well into after you've used the auxiliary and it's to do with because they want to pair with you know hundreds and thousands of other, other speakers and that's also why you can no do, can't do easy stereo pairing you've got to go through the app and that's why JBL in their wisdom uh, since the JBL Charge 3 which was a piece of cake 
You pay them once in stereo, they always pay it again in stereo. But ever since then, JBL, in their wisdom, have decided, nah, they don't really want it that easy. Let's make it, let's make it hard. Anyway, for those who were mentioning that, I didn't measure any lag on the auxiliary input on this speaker. They are both IP67. That means you can drop them in water and they are dust proof. You can drop them in water up to a meter for 30 minutes. Now, in terms of claimed frequency response, as I mentioned, 53.5 <laughs> seems incredibly precise, given that they don't tell you the range. Plus or minus 3 dB is what we're after. If you don't mention the plus or minus range, <laughs> why be that accurate? I said that before, I'll say it again, but even a bigger laugh now for Sony. Every speaker Sony come out with, they say will <coughs> play 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So every speaker you could use as a subwoofer. I mean, so at least, at least give JBL some credit. 53.5 is, you know, it's pretty much where we are with the bass on that. 20 hertz is not where we are with the bass on the Sony, and that is ridiculous. Sony don't tell you what the uh, power output on their speakers are or what they're rated at in terms of the amps. I, I reckon it's probably a 40 watt speaker. Not that it matters. I'm going to do a maximum volume test. You'll see where we are. Uh, we know we know this is rated at a 50 watt speaker, the JBL Extreme 3, but only if you plug in the mains. So maybe it's 30, 35 watts or something equivalents uh, on battery, but we'll see, gonna test that. That's pretty much the comparison of the specs. You really wanna know what they sound like. I'm gonna go straight in. Both speakers play about the same volume at 50%, and then they'll do a little bit of normalizing afterwards. 50% comparison of these speakers. Stream 3, XB43 plus 3 bass, XB43 plus 10 bass. Right away, you're going to see the issue with using the EQ in the XB43 app. Understand, the nearer you are to zero, the louder it is. Minus 21.1 at 60 hertz is less bass than minus 20.3 at 60 hertz. Yet, I'm plus 3 against plus 10. What the app is doing, or what the tuning is doing, it's reducing the frequency response relative to the bass. So you, plus 10 means you get a more bass heavy sound because the mids and the highs have been reduced, but you haven't actually got more bass. So when all else is equal, the plus three is more bass and it's more balanced. So plus three against the extreme three, XB43 holds its own upper bass. It is stronger in the upper bass. By 100 hertz, it's only by a decibel. By 80 hertz, there's nothing in it. By 60 hertz, we are 4.7 decibels louder on the extreme three than the XB43. And by 50 hertz, nine decibels louder. There's no competition here. In terms of lower bass, the Extreme 3 nails it against the XB43. They both have a 12 
around a 12 kilohertz tuning. I mean, there's a peak over and above what it would be naturally here at the 12 kilohertz region. And these volumes, Extreme 3 has a little bit more in the lower mids. And indeed around the 3 to 5,000 hertz region. So as I said before, it's... In, when you go into the app in the in Sony and it says oh up to six dB, well it looks like it's saying up to six, or up to ten. Is it plus ten? Is, maybe is it dB? But it, it's it's not really doing that. It's juggling. It's juggling the frequency range. So it's rearranging it. It's getting yeah, a little bit of a boost, but a lot of it is relative changes either side or whatever, wherever you you want up or down on the sliders. So. Um, and it can change where you are in the volume. So it's not a very precise uh, thing using that EQ in the app. But as you can see, you go plus 10, it becomes very muddy. And there's no doubt. They've done a nice job, I think, on the JBL Extreme 3, apart from the price. If they were priced the same, we would be throwing that away, wouldn't we? Sort of. This is great fun. It's got a, a nice low bass. But they make up for not having the deep bass on a speaker that weighs a kilo more. And mm, look, it's quite big as well. They've made up for not having the deep bass. They couldn't come up with the deep bass, even though they sold us about there, these special drivers uh, on the Sony XB43. But they give it upper bass punch, as we often see. You can't go deep. Well, we'll go bigger on there, like they do on the Extreme One. A lot of people still prefer the Extreme One over the other two speakers because they like where the bass is. It's at the upper bass, and that's where you get a bit more of a punch, depending on how your ears work and what tracks you listen to. It, it may actually be more bass heavy to you. That's what they've done with the XB43. It's over punchy for me in default mode. That's why I like to fill out the mids a little bit, uh, balances out. That's what I say. Definitely prefer, you know, on these comparisons, the deeper. It, it's it's quite compelling <laughs> once you've what you've heard how deep that goes and in a balanced way on the JBL Extreme 3. That big 12.5 kilohertz. They have, both have similar tuning, I have to say, but it is a bigger a boost at 12.5 kilohertz. Um, and just about stays the right side of uh, overdoing it. So crisper, <laughs> uh, more exciting, but this remains safe, uh, a safe sound and a big sound stage. We're gonna go up uh, to an 80% comparison. At this point, plays a bit louder on the Extreme 3, I'm playing that at 73% and the XB43 at 80% volume. Baby, I'm
Stream 3 against XP43 plus 10 bass. XP43 does have the bigger upper bass, even down to 80 hertz. At 60 hertz and below, the Extreme 3 is thrashing the XP43. Still very prominent for both speakers, the 12 kilohertz peak, and it is stronger in the highs on the Extreme 3. So a bit more clarity and bigger, deeper bass, but XP43 has the upper bass punch. With the XP43 just plus three in the bass, it still holds rain in the upper bass region, but by 80 hertz and below, Extreme 3 again thrashing the XP43. They do have similar high-end high, high -end tuning now. Both have a peak 5 to 7,000 hertz and again at 12 kilohertz. Very similar tuning. Just a bit stronger in the highs on the Extreme 3. Pretty much the same story. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's absolutely demolishing the XP43 in terms of actual genuine low bass. And it, it is a nice bass. It may be a bit tiring over the long run for you, but it does it in a reasonably balanced way. It's crisp enough to balance that out as well because of how they've EQ'd it. And <laughs> it, it, it's still a boombox, but it's the right side of a boombox to still be a reasonable listen, uh, to be a go-to speaker uh, for me, whereas the others were too much of a boombox. I need some balance. You know, I can't just have a thumping bass all the time. But yeah, I think because of that, that really uh, nice, rounded, warm, deep, bass that we get from the Extreme 3 now, along with that crispiness, it's demolishing the XP43. Look, in so, depending on what you're listening on, you may hear no difference at all, because that difference is in the deep bass. If whatever you're listening on cannot do deep bass, you won't even hear a difference. And the upper bass of the XP43 is going to come through, and you're going to say, the guy doesn't know what he's talking about, there's more bass on the XP43. There isn't. It's going to depend entirely on what you're listening to in the real world, when you have the speakers in front of you and listening to them at AB, it's a nice safe sound on the XB43. The, the tuning is similar, but what the XB43 cannot do in any way, shape or form is compete with the low bass on the Xtreme 3. So let's really embarrass it. Let's put the mains plug in the back of this. Let's go to maximum volume and we'll do battery, mains, plus three, plus 10, and compare them all at maximum volume. Let's, let's see the limits of that bass anyway.
Stream 3 has a trick that if you plug the mains lead in, it will go louder. And it will go louder by over a decibel compared to battery mode. And it is all over louder, which means you do get more bass. We are getting a couple of decibels louder on the mains than on battery in terms of deep bass. But the overall frequency response remains about the same. In fact, there's slightly more of that 12 kilohertz peak on the battery mode. Even in battery mode, Extreme 3 is louder than XB43 in EQ mode, which would be louder if you see my XB43 test than if it was in default mode. And it's louder just a little bit by half a decibel. Peaks are the same as it happens, and the RMS is basically the same. So it's not by much. And again, plus 10 in the bass gives you a bit more relative bass, but not more actual bass on the XB43. In fact, it's got about a decibel half less uh, at 50 hertz than the plus 3 mode. Crazy. They both retain their 12 kilohertz peak through all the modes. That 12 kilohertz peak is there. Ultimately, look, it does go louder, whether it's on battery or whether it's on mains. You've got the ability to plug the mains in and go even louder, but even on battery, it's louder than the XB43, but there's more upper bass uh, than on the Extreme 3, even when you plug in the mains. But for me in default mode, that's what makes it unlistenable, really. Um, it's just too much punch without a genuine deep bass. But as I said, once I set, for me personally, I've been listening uh, 364, and you know, I have been going to this almost, you know, on a daily basis, simply because I know it's gonna sound reasonable with whatever I play. It's never gonna uh, give me music in a whole different way than I've heard it before. And I can get that from the XB43, from the uh, JBL Extreme 3, because of that deep bass. Uh, for me, it's the only speaker I've got that digs that deep bass in, digs that deep in terms of a portable Bluetooth speaker. It is genuinely portable because it's only two kilos now, again, it's the three kilos uh, of the XB43. So, am I gonna throw away the XB43? No, still a safe sound. That still can be a bit much, you know, if I'm, if I'm up close, it's nice to listen to, 10, 20 minutes. Um, I'm not saying it's over tiring or anything like that. However, uh, there are times when I just don't want quite that much bass. Um, and that's just a pleasant listen. You may not think a pleasant listen is, is, is enough to, gen to warrant having a speaker that weighs three kilos and is quite that big. You know, for 200 pounds, you may be expecting more. This isn't bad value. I didn't like this when I first had it. It took a while to get used to it. Now I'm playing in my EQ mode all the time. I do quite like it. It's simply a bigger sound. I do like uh, the, the Motion Plus, as you well know, uh, and it is crisper. It can open up the sound more, but what it, it's still a smaller sound overall. If I only have one speaker, I kind of, because it's a bigger sound coming from the XP43, that's why, I, anyway, this is supposed to be about the JBL Extreme 3, I do think they've done a good job in it, except that SBC, if we had a better codec, you know, Aptex, we've got even, would we have got even more out of it? 280 quid, well, that needs to come down to about 200, really, doesn't it? Well, maybe 220-ish. But in terms of the Extreme series, it's an improvement. It, it goes deeper, it's more balanced. Um, and I quite like it, I quite like it. So, hope you got something from my comparison, and I thank you for watching.